When you're a chronic overthinker, every day feels less like you're actually living and more like a long string of thoughts that extends from the day until the night. Because when you overthink, you're not actually here. You're in some scenario that is taking place in your head due to the myriad of questions that could be clouding the present moment. What if I would have done this differently? What if they don't like me? When am I finally going to feel good again? All pretty one-ended questions that won't even help even if you do find an answer to them. But then there's those things that you overthink that actually do need answers. Like when am I finally going to be able to pay off the outrageous amount of student loan debt I've accumulated that keeps increasing in cost due to interest? For me personally, overthinking usually manifests itself when one, I spend too much time inside, two, before I'm about to do something that I'm afraid to do, or three, right after I make some sort of mistake or do something that I didn't want to do. But for the most part, I've completely stopped the incessant, unnecessary thoughts that used to cloud my head on a daily basis. So I'm going to take you back to my old overthinking days and also go through the three scenarios in which overthinking arises and how to handle each of these three scenarios which are when you're overthinking about something that's happening in the present overthinking about something that's in the future and overthinking about something that's in the past the worst situations in which my overthinking was more than apparent in present situations was at a social gathering or party i would overanalyze almost every single action and movement that i took am i standing with the best posture Am I making a fool of myself? And one of the worst ones was being in a conversation and asking myself, what should I say next while simultaneously trying to listen to the person that I was talking to? Which never ever goes well because usually you can't think of something to say next. And at the same time, you're not actually listening to that person because you're just in your head. And it did happen a lot, especially with women that I was interested in. Honestly, it still happens now sometimes. I'll just freeze up because my brain freezes and I can't think of a single interesting thing to say. And this leads me to the first thing that I noticed when I was an avid overthinker, and that was my need for control. Overthinkers usually tend to lack the ability to relinquish control over a certain situation and their life and their mind. As I talked about in my Why You Care So Much video, one of our very basic human needs is our need for control. It's what our brains developed towards to allow us to survive because as cavemen, if we can control a certain scenario, then we have a much better chance of surviving. We got so much low level brain shit still up here. It just, it takes over sometimes. In those moments where we are overthinking, you convince yourself that you can't control this. And this is only half true. While you cannot control the fact that thoughts that trigger overthinking will always arise sometimes, you can control whether you engage with them. It's gotten to the point where I can consciously identify a thought that I know is going to lead me to start overthinking. Let's take, for instance, when I'm about to approach a woman that I would like to approach. The closer I get to that point of just pulling the trigger and doing it, the more my mind makes up excuses as to why I should not do it. You know, my mind tells me I could potentially make a fool out of myself and get laughed at, or I could get rejected. But when you face these thoughts after so many times and understand that the only reason they happen is to prevent you from going into a threatening or uncomfortable situation, you can say, I don't give a fuck and choose not to listen or I identify with them. I know this sounds difficult and maybe even impossible, but think of it like this. Try asking yourself how many of the thoughts you had yesterday you can remember today. To be honest, out of the several hundred that I had, I'm not sure I can even recall 10 thoughts. Now, why is that? Most of the thoughts we have come and go almost instantly because we don't grant them any special attention, but leave them and return to whatever we were doing. Even though you might not be aware of it, you're already capable of choosing not to engage in a conversation with your thoughts just as you can ignore a phone that keeps calling you. And recognizing that power is really the first step. I wanna dive a little bit deeper into control because so many people struggle with needing control over anything. And I wanna talk about how most control is actually an illusion. If you can really drill this into your head, then accepting the fact that you don't have much control over your life at all becomes much easier. You need to understand this fact. Most of what happens to you in this life is out of your control. Painful is going to happen. Things that you don't really understand that cause you suffering is always going to happen. And no matter how wise or how old you get, you're gonna 
fuck up. I don't show it a lot in my YouTube videos, but I'm messing up in various different ways all throughout every single day. And we all are. And that's totally out of my control, but you can control how you react to the uncontrollable. Before applying this, uncontrollable inconveniences or things I deem to be negative would ruin my entire day or potentially my entire week. Now when I get the sense that a triggering situation or thought is going to come up, I put myself in the frame of mind that it is going to come up and that that is totally fine because I control how I respond to it. So I relinquish control over those overwhelming thoughts and then I bring my awareness to what I can control, which is my reaction. So now here's what happens when I'm afraid to approach somebody. I can feel all the sensations that happen that try to paralyze me and recognize them as a basic human instinct and that instinct is to protect me from an illusion. And that illusion is that I'm going to be in danger because the outcome is unknown or it's gonna make me uncomfortable. Then I separate myself from whatever low level version of myself that is, and I kind of just push it to the side and I say, you know what, low level version of me, I don't give a shit what you have to say about this. It's not gonna kill me. It's not gonna be the end of the world, so. I'm just gonna go do this. So become aware of your trigger thoughts and sensations, relinquish your control over them, and then control your reaction to them. What's ironic is that the people who tend to overthink the least are the ones that allow themselves to overthink the most in a sense. Because if you don't allow that to happen, it's only going to amplify, and then you're gonna start overthinking about overthinking, and it's this vicious cycle. All right, so now let's talk about overthinking in regards to the future. The way that I stopped doing this so much is I stopped trying to excessively plan out everything that's going to happen. And in a sense, that is another way to relinquish your power over the need for controlling everything. Of course, I still plan things out or basically how I want them to pan out, but I won't go into every single little detail about how exactly I want this thing to look or how I want this day to go. Because when I do that, not only am I just leaving room for disappointment, but I'm also giving myself more potential ways for the thing in the future to go wrong, which would then produce more worries and overthinking when the time comes and things don't go exactly as planned, which they pretty much never do, like let's be honest. As much preparation as I do, even if I put it down to a T, something goes differently. You need to let go of the idea that things need to go as planned. Life is the most uncontrollable, malleable thing. Nothing in this life is permanent and with every second, everything you see around you is transforming and metamorphosing morphosizing into something else. So to try and figure out how do things will look like in the future exactly is just a recipe for disaster. And that brings me to how I've dealt with overthinking in the past. This is probably the one that's haunted me the most over the years. No worse feeling compares than seeing things you could have done differently, potentially better in hindsight. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. A lot of you are way too hard on yourselves. You're a damn human being like everybody else. You are always going to things up throughout your life. That is never going to change because that's how human beings are. And I just fully understand and accept this now. Yes, I wish I would have done some things differently or said things differently from my past, but now I think of it as a positive thing. I'm happy I messed up because now that makes me far more capable to handle similar things in the future. Also, I like to put it this way. When you think about a past, you are thinking in terms of a you that doesn't even exist. We want to remain constant as a human because consistent Consistency equals comfortability, and as we've learned, this is one of our basic human needs. We want to create a picture of who we are, what makes us us, and the only way to do that is to relate who we are to what we've already done or what's happened in the past. But that is a complete illusion because the past doesn't actually exist. Please ask yourself, is there anything you can do about what's already happened? No, there isn't. But there is a place in which you have power, which is right now. You have far more control over your reactions to thoughts and situations than you think. It's not really even that I'm more present now, although I do think I am, and that really helps with trying to get out of my head. It's just that I don't give a shit if I fuck up anymore because I know that I'm human and I have flaws and that's gonna happen throughout my life no matter what. So it's just like, all right, this is gonna happen. It's guaranteed. So I'm just not gonna be too hard on myself and forgive myself and you know, just go on and move on throughout my day. That acceptance and not caring and being happy with that lack of control 
It's everything. It makes life so much more enjoyable. Big thank you to all the patrons on my channel on Patreon. If you're not aware of what this is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where I'm putting out exclusive videos and podcasts you can't find anywhere else. If you want to check that out, the link is in the description, patreon.com slash Cole Hastings. Hopefully this was helpful talking about my experience dealing with this and how to get over this. And that is it. So have a good rest of your day or night.